Starts with a wizard, he's old and he's wise. And though he is small, there is strength in his size. The Goliath from the West, he's not smart, but he's strong. The flag and slayers, this is their song. Now the warlock, he's lost all the memories he had. Cause a deal with a demon went seemingly bad. And the druid on his quest to save the shadow plane When you hear tortured souls, you'll remember his name They're the flag and slayers, and this is their song They're the flag and slayers, the adventure goes on The cleric, she heals in the light of the moon she wants to find purpose, it'll come someday soon. Then the rogue draws his sword, medals clashing again. When it comes to a duel, he will always win. They're the flag and slayers, they drink and they fight. They're the flag and slayers, by day or by night. They're the flag and slayers, and this is their song. They're the flag. Slayers, the adventure goes on. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Flag and Slayers. Uh, I am your DM slash host slash awesome. I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, so, slash awesome person, Jacob. Shut up, Caleb. I don't need your help. Sorry, Jake. Oh. <laughs> Caleb, uh, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, shit. I'll do it, too. You know I'll do it. It's you've been drinking a lot. Oh, shit. I forgot we actually, I actually have a reason to make it. 14? Okay. Noted. All right. Oh, so, in case uh, you missed last week, uh, like a few of our players did, or, um, or if you're a hunter and you've missed a couple weeks. It's okay. Dude, dude, oh, whoa, whoa. I didn't say it was a bad thing. I'm just saying. We all missed a couple episodes here and there. All right? It's all good. I don't. He had work and vacation. I have, I, have I missed one? I don't think you've missed one, Abby. I think you and I are hanging in there strong. Anyway. Well, so, uh, Thea got to meet her brother, Therion. Uh, who, you know, cool dude, overall, mm -hmm. wants to impress her really bad. Like, that's his whole motivation. Um, As he should. And, uh, you know, got drinks with him. He he told everybody in the bar it was her birthday. Um, hated that. Yeah, she hated it. He thought it was hilarious. You know, he's just trying to get her to come out of her shell more. That's all it is. No, I will you know? not. Uh, so oh, the party man. had fun getting to know him getting a little drunk and uh that's basically all that happened last episode it was a lot of talking and a lot of uh character development so uh just to kind of set the scene where everyone is uh Therion has just left um the dozens upon the about five dozen tankards that he bought Lochnar has almost finished all of them off uh Zygon and uh Animus you guys have been sipping a little bit. Thea's been... We've got our milk one. stouts. Yeah, you got your milk stouts. Uh, so it and... took like two shots of something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and Tanzu uh, is up in the facility researching uh, Black Spore. Uh, so we will actually start with Anzu. Um, so Anzu, you're in um, this giant library... Um, the the uh, books that you're uh, reading from, they're not bound with uh, by traditional means. Um, the the exterior of the books, uh, the covers, I guess, is what you know normal people call them. Um, the covers are um, slightly sticky to the touch. Um, Just like not magazine. I'm sure. Huh. Not, not, um, 
not like it'll stick to your hand if you put it on there, but like it's just got kind of this like your skin sticks for a second when you touch it. Uh -huh. um, and then the inside, the pages are not on a traditional paper. They're more on um, like this super, super thin um, like shale, basically. Like this, uh, these books have somehow been enchanted to um, to be able to write on stone. Uh, basically so uh you're reading through these in this library that is naturally dug out they didn't like build any extra building to it it's just they found a section and then they dug out like a quarry a quarry um go ahead and make a perception check for me yes, sir. Twelve. well um You've been studying for a little while, researching. Zygon and Anz, uh, Animus said they'd be back uh, about half an hour ago. Uh, didn't tell you where they were going, but, you know, you assumed a bathroom break. Turns out, might have been a longer break than that. I thought we told uh, them. I don't think you did. I don't remember you doing it, so if you did, my bad. But it's been a while. Maybe, maybe they told you and you weren't listening because you were deep in study. Who knows? Okay. But um, you notice that um, the temperature in the in the library is dropping, and as you breathe out, you can see your breath. Okay. And this is just randomly happening. Yeah. As as you, I know. Yeah. You look around. No one seems to be around. Okay. Uh, do I know of any reasons that might be happening? Well, there's a few. Uh, one, That's... there could be a there could be a white dragon in the area uh, that is very old, like a, a adult to ancient dragon. I'd could like affect... to get out my checklist of reasons the room might be reasons why room is cold. Okay, so um, could be a white dragon. It could okay. be a ghost. Circle. Okay. Uh, could be a banshee. Would those um, be invisible? Yes, banshees are invisible. Circle. As are ghosts. Uh, um, it could be um, a yeti. Certain Chance. yetis. Probably not. That's probably uh, what it is. Ice giant. Um, or it could be a naturally occurring phenomenon within this cave network that maybe gets cold at a certain time. And that's why no one's around. <clears throat> if there is a ghost eye banshee in here, would you please reveal yourself? As for I need this to deduct reasons as to why the room is cold. Um. You say this. Uh, nothing. Nothing's going on. No response. All right. But you so do, when you... you do hear. No. Oh. As the doors to the library close. Ooh, what did I do? Right. What did you do? Hold on. I'd like to is... take some of my suit. And when it gets cold, does that mean that they're near me? Or they're just in the room? Um, It depends on the power of the ghost slash spirit slash banshee slash ice dragon. Slash yeti. Slash yeti slash giant. <clears throat> As I thought, an invisible yeti. <clears throat> The infamous invisible yetis. I'd like to take some of the sood that I have and just kind of sprinkle it around all over the room. Okay, so you sprinkle it around, kind of creating a circle around yourself. And there is enough sodium, there's enough salt in this sood that you could make a salt circle to where a ghost couldn't cross it. Salt circle. Yeah, so you pour it out around you. Who knew that your drug addiction would come in handy? Um, so, uh, you uh, you kind of wait a second. Nothing's disturbing any of the powder that you've put out. But uh, the torches that are magically lit in this library start to go out, getting closer and closer to you. Uh-oh. 
Uh -oh. I'd like to cast protection from good and evil on myself. Protection from good and evil. Okay. Interesting. Mostly from the evil. Mostly evil. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, but it could be a good ghost, so you want to make sure the good's in there as well. Okay. Yeah. It could be Casper, you never Who knows what a good ghost could do. I know. Yeah. Good ghosts are sometimes worse than bad ghosts. Okay. Protection from good and evil. Okay. <clears throat> so, you hear off to the right of you a uh, childlike giggle. Okay. <laughs> And then just flutters off. I'm gonna step out of the circle. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay. Um, make an investigation check. That was terrible. Okay. This is what I'm good at. I say that. I'm gonna destroy myself. But it's good. Uh, 21. 21. Um, so. You look around a little bit and you see the sides of the um, of the bookshelves are starting to freeze, and you see the floor is starting to collect a thin sheet of frost on it. As every surface in this area is starting to kind of just get frozen, essentially. All right. Oh, answer. Could be an and is that rate. happening pretty close to me right now? Uh, it's going further away from you. Oh, so it's moving back. Yeah, it's moving like deeper into the library. I'll walk deeper towards the library. We okay. don't need to fight if you want. You know, I get it. You're lonely. I've like been lonely too. Check. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay, so you begin walking, and uh, you're following this trail, and you see, um, you see in the frost, there's small um, child-sized footprints, not gnome child size, like human child size, mm -hmm. um, footprints in this uh, bare footprints in the uh, frost, and like as you get closer to them, they begin freezing over. You uh, turn a corner into this large open area where um, it's a study area uh -huh. and um, you see uh, this it's like this giant large um, uh, dome that uh, it's covered in glass the top of the dome is glass and you it's about maybe 300 feet up it's giant and you see and through the glass um you see through the glass are these like geodes, like these purple amethyst colored geodes that are growing towards the glass. And it looks like they, um, it looks like workers sometimes go on top of there and kind of sand off the geodes using magic uh, or other means and to make sure that it doesn't crack the dome. Footprints are going towards it? Yeah, so the footprints are going to the center. And as you get closer, uh, you see snow is falling uh, inside the library. Is it help you need? No response. Yeah, I'll walk closer to the dome. Do I see anything else? So you come around the corner to the dome. Uh, you see a... Um, make a perception check. Or investigation. I'll let you choose. Yeah, investigation, my man. Alright, that's a good one. 20. Not natural. Okay. okay. So you, uh, almost immediately, you spot um, this small child, um, probably no older than six, uh, standing in the center, kind of just looking up at the snow and, like, catching it with their hand and, um, you know, just being a kid in the snow, wearing a stark white sheet-looking thing, like, like a onesie sort of, like, thing. Um, really, like, like it looks like it's made out of silk or, like, some sort of really, um, 
fancy material. Um, long white hair that goes just past the shoulders, and it's like snow white. Um, almost blinding. When the light catches it in a certain way, uh, it's kind of, you have to turn away a little bit. Um, and it's a little girl. Okay, really quick. Turn around. No jump scares here. Sorry, just had to check. Ghost story. Um, knock on the glass. Is there an entrance? Can I go in? Or? Yeah, you can like, yeah, there's a few doors and you go up to one and you open it okay, and then okay. you go inside the dome. Okay, I'll walk up to the girl and is she okay. looking at me or anything? No, like she's got her back to you. Hello. Um, creepy child. She she plops down in the snow and begins to make a snow angel and she's I'll make a snow angel with me. Fair enough. I'll make a snow angel with you. Hers is a little bit bigger than yours. <laughs> um <laughs> Oh that's embarrassing. <laughs> oh. Said, no. What's oh. wrong with you? What? What? You being specious? No no. No. Yeah, I don't think you've seen my package yet, have you? <laughs> it would be part of that snow angel. <laughs> yeah, well, my angel's got a third leg. <laughs> it's big. Uh, you say this in front of a child. Um, <laughs> this is energy. So, uh, she finishes I making it. She finishes making a snow, snow angel, and she uh, stands up, uh, and she looks at it. And then you sit up, and she looks at yours. I think you're going to need one of those soon. You know, you, you really do have a way with words. Do Thank I? you. Oh, my name is Glacile. Glacile. Do I know that name? Uh, Make a religion check. Religion. I don't like this is going... I should have ran out. Hate when it gets religious, you know. <laughs> Hate when they when bring religious religious to like, oh no. 18. 18? Okay. Um You've never heard of anybody named Glacile. Mm -hmm. Um But you do um you see like you, you get to see her face now. Her eyes are pure white. There is no like differentiation between cornea pupil. It is it is just two orbs of white, uh, mm -hmm. but it's not like it's not like eyes rolled in back of the head. It's like they're like it's like snowballs are are her eyes almost like that purity and that clarity. Um, you also see that um, her eyelashes and her eyebrows are ice. Like, they're not, like, hair that's frozen or anything. They are full-on ice. She's got ice on her eyebrows, ice for eyelashes. Um, and you see that her skin is... Um, it's not translucent, but it is um, It is definitely very white. And her name is Lucille or Glucille? Glacile. Glacile. Okay. Yeah. Glacier. I like Glacier. Uh, it's like glacier. No way, guys. So why do you say I need one like of those? Pokemon. Glacio? Oh, I don't know. Just maybe. You're old. You guys have a lot of scary things coming your way. Fuck me. Oh, well, recently it's become kind, kind of normal. Have uh, have have you seen my mom? Who is your mother? Uh, her name is Winogear. Should I be scared? Why is everyone making that face? Oh, you were here uh, for that. So, uh, she was flashback. In the woods. So you you hear that name, and for a second you're like, where do where do I know that name? You're getting older in years. Names come and go, you know. But you remember, this was the woman in the forest that you guys met before you got here that told you about the disease and told you that she was from a different plane and that she was a god on that plane. It came she from thought we plane. were interesting and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah and she wanted you to bring her a research sample of... Um, the Black Spore. 
of the black spore. It came from her plane. Why, uh, yes, we have seen your mother. Um, she's actually the reason we're here. Oh. Oh. Well, that, that's bad. Well, I'm sure you're fine at a party. Oh, yeah, I can do this. And then you see, like, the, the snow starts to swirl, and then you see, like, a snowflake appear in the snow, and then, like, a snowman builds itself in the snowstorm, and um, she just starts messing around. She gets distracted, it seems. Plessio, she starts messing around. Why is that a bad thing, and why are you here? Oh, well, Mom doesn't really talk to people unless... Well, um, she doesn't really talk to people unless they're about to die. Ah, yes. Well, that's quite the party trick. Um, <clears throat> were you the little footsteps in the lab? Uh-huh. That was just adorable. I have a thing for babies. They're so cute. I take care of them. Oh. When you say baby... You see anger flash up. across her face. Uh, a very mature, yet small statured woman. Quite she goes back to playing with the snow. Okay. Is there anything else that I'm kind of seeing around here, or is it just. She just. It's really dark. Like, unnaturally dark. Like, even with dark vision, you can't really see. You can just, basically, the center where you two are is illuminated. Everything else is dark. And you notice that she is the source of the illumination, and it's faint. Her illumination is kind of faint, but it's just enough that you can see her and around 10 feet around you. Lucille, you seem quite special. Would you happen to know someone named Therian? Uh, no. Oh, I think my time has come to... Oh, wait! Oh? I... Uh, wait. Um... I... Th maybe? Is he kind of tall? Yes. Sexy. Hmm. Oh! You... You mean Theo. Yes, Theo. Yeah, he's my cousin. Oh, really? No. <laughs> Sometimes you just hate that to see it. You... Oh, my... That would make uh, you two nothing. Nothing, but he is my nephew. It's nice to see family when I see it, huh? Technically, he's not your nephew. You also technically haven't met him yet. You've only heard about him through. Oh wait, a yeah, he w wouldn't be because he's. He's dead. on Thea's mom's side, which is not related to you in any way, shape, or form. His mom. Hold on, no. Yeah. His mom. I feel like is Andrew Thea's would mom. claim him though. Probably. That's probably a. My son. Answer. This is my <laughs> biological son. I Theo. birthed him myself. I actually, it was just me. Sense. Old flesh and blood. I pushed him out. Okay. <clears throat> I was married in the family, so uh, not blood related. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> He's a lot handsomer than you. Uh, and then you see the, the kind of childlike, innocent smile where it's like kids say stuff that they don't understand is rude. It, um, it immediately <laughs> turns into this just, like, smirk of, like, I just burned you so hard. <laughs> so what do you know of Theo? What does he do? Oh, well, he's, he's, um, well, he's my cousin. Yeah. And he can shoot electricity, which is kind of boring. Because, you know, like, who can't do that? But good guy all around. Right. Oh yeah, he's nice. Yeah, yeah. When Hasn't I'm this showed... when I'm this size, he takes me on piggyback rides. Oh yes, and you know doesn't destroy the innocent or. Oh no. No. Uh, um, <clears throat> I'm going to head out now. Would you like to come or would you prefer? No thanks. Oh, yeah. Well, 
Um, it was very nice knowing you. Um, if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. But maybe next time, don't, you know, the whole, you'll need an angel and death. I was it just trying to warn you. I don't really want to know when I'm going to die. I like life as a big surprise. Oh, I mean, I don't know when. I guess my mom might know when you're going to die. Thank you. Huh. I don't know. You might want to ask her. I'll try to do it. She, uh, she hands you, you see she makes something out of ice, and it's the small ice lantern. So you're going to need this. What does it do? It's a lantern. Just <laughs> a regular lantern? I mean, it's made of ice. How many of those have you found? But won't it melt? <sighs> Lucia, this is, thank you very much for this gift. Um, let me see if I have it. Uh, I'll give Thea, her make a religion check for me. Nine. Okay. Uh, uh so you're a little drunk. Uh, but you know, being so... being a cleric of the Moonweaver, you kind of know time and how things move. So you know that the the dual moons have just entered a new phase. Um, away, they're uh, crescent moons now. They're starting to illuminate more. Um, Anzu, you notice as you're saying goodbye to uh, Glacile, uh that she is getting taller, her hair is getting longer, and she is looking slightly older. Uh, Lucille? Mm hmm. You are. Mm. I'm going to give you a gift. I didn't really expect to meet any company. It is a dragon claw. She grabs it, she looks at it. Time. She just kind of shrugs, rolls her eyes, freezes it, shatters it on the ground. <laughs> Why do you think I need one of these? So he is your cousin, which means your yeah. mom is uh -huh. the sister. Uh, yeah, that's how families work. Okay, did did Linares tell me any of this? So Linares wouldn't have known any of this. She her her brother is Thea's father. She's not she doesn't you don't even know if she really knew Thea's mom. Okay. So she never really delved into Thea's mom's side. Not that you know of, no. Okay. Um Well, it was nice talking to you. <sighs> yeah, whatever. Ah, yes. We have someone back in the city, like I think you'd like him quite well. I believe there's about five of him. Her. He, she. They? They is what we call them. <laughs> you, uh, you see she's starting to get impatient. It's kind of Okay, weird. I'm leaving. I'll close the door. Just like Richter when he was young. You close the door. You see, uh, as you close the door, the lantern lights... And uh, you begin walking through, and it illuminates this vast darkness. Um, and it begins melting as you walk until you get to the end of the library. The lantern melts, the door opens, and you are now back in the main part of the facility. All right. Um, I'll make my way to some of the others if I know where they are. Gonna... Uh, yeah, you have a general idea of where they are. We told them I, we would. They're on the. They're on the second level. We were heading to some bar, on, on the second level to just you know, just because Thea said something about her brother. But I'll then we started drinking and we never came back. Yeah. I'll head for the second level. So uh, you guys are drinking, you know, kind of dealing with the fact that you just met Thea's brother. Uh, Anzu comes in shortly after um uh anzu make a medicine check for me no, I... <laughs> five five um you 
hand feels a little numb, but you know, nothing nothing too bad from the Lancer. Just a little a little cold. That's it. Yeah. So you walk in, you see the group with their mountains of tankers that Lochnar is stacking up in a neat pattern, trying and to make tanker art. Animus, Lochnar! Thanks for buying us these drinks, buddy. Yes, yes, of course. You know, it's the least I could do. I, I, I'll I, buy you a drink. Holy shit. And I'm acting like I'm, I'm like absolutely obliterated, and I feel like I'm not yet. I think you've drank like two. And no, yeah, well, yeah. yeah no. the, the elevation. The elevation, remember. Remember. Yeah, well, it's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you guys are underground. So it's the, uh, and Zygon. Uh, you, you see Zygon kind of parts the, the tankards, and he's just sitting there with a, a stout in hand next to Thea. Ah, yes. Here. Try a stout, Enzu. Yes. Well, I did lots of research. Met a um, old, old friend, maybe? No, new friend. Um, and now I'm here. Uh, uh, what were you doing? Just regular research? What were you researching? Uh, well, I was researching this spore. Um, and then I met a nice, lovely woman. That sounds boring. You met Get a drunk. A woman? She did tell me that I need an angel because <laughs> I'm about to die. And so are all of you. I, I feel like we've heard this multiple times at this point, though. Yeah. Yes, I've Usually. become very desensitized to it. Yeah, too. Although I'm old, it might affect you more. Eh. Ken could don't live that long. And, you know, Shadowfell, Evil Warlock, Demons, Dragons, the whole thing, you know? Uh, what, uh, what research did you come to the conclusion on? Is there, uh, any sort of temporary <laughs> fix for the the black spore that you guys could um come to because i think that's what we left you and uh the what, let me hold on uh professor um, draw snack and snack snatch fuck me. draws neck draws neck that one and then also adelaide draws knock my bad draws knock. adelaide was also helping in some of that research yeah uh, um yes. well it was mostly me but what i can tell you is what the dm is about to tell me. <laughs> um answer you um you're very well versed in arcane knowledge. Um, most of the information on Black Spore is written by by clerics mm -hmm. and um, doctors. So a lot of it is doctor jargon, weird uh, medical stuff. You do um, you do kind of have a history of what um, what happened. So basically. Um, the story that uh, a, gr a trio showed up to the village one day, took refuge, left, and then a few weeks later, the first person got the disease. And then it steadily progressed to there, to where the village uh, sought out help from wherever they could. They eventually discovered um, a, uh, a basically a newborn beholder um, that offered them help in exchange for worship. Uh, he brought them into the Underdark. He couldn't really help them. He could slow the progression of the disease because through research you found that the disease has a arcane element to it through through its growth. And that the um, that since Beholders have an anti-magic cone, um, they can slow down the progression of the disease. Um, but it didn't help ultimately in the long run. And the original Beholder, uh, Xenogast, imagined what would be better than one Xenogast, two Xenogasts. The second Xenogast killed the first one, and he was not as chill. Uh, so then the uh, Elven village asked help from the Drow village that um, was uh, nearby. The Drow came, tried to save as many people as it could, and then uh, in total there were 20 refugees... Uh, and they sealed away Xenogas Jr. Um, but there were 20 refugees in total, and that was around 100 years ago. I will relay that. Yeah, so you guys all know that now. So... Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Met your cousin. Quite creepy. My cousin? Also wouldn't be her cousin. It's her brother's cousin, 
not her. Same mom. Yeah, but the mom is not how they're related. His father is Glacial's uncle. They're half siblings. They're not full blooded siblings. So Sophia is not I'm like, a regular he's person. God. He's yeah. a demigod. Okay. And somehow they got one out of the one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe also Because probably. religious magic, weird. Not technically you. She's not a very kind person. Well, maybe she is. She kept telling me I was gonna die over and over and over. Again. You are pretty fucking old. Huh. Thank you for your kind words, Thea, on this family reunion. Oh, you're, you're just welcome. as much of a trauma as she was. Mm. That's what they tell me. So, Anzu, you, um, not really knowing the medical stuff, you hand that over to Thea. Uh, Thea, I need you to either make a religion check or a medicine check. I'll let you do one or the other. Let me see. <clears throat> So it sounds like, after all the research we've gotten to, it doesn't really... Do, do you think it comes down to mattering who the original trio are? Or it comes down to trying to figure out and get the Black Spore to wi Winnow... What was her name? Winnow Cass? Winnow Gear. Winnow Gear. Winnow There's Gear. a lot of no Gear stuff. Well, I was told that Winnow Gear is the one that, well... <clears throat> Basically, when you see her, you die. Well, we all saw her, and we'll die eventually, so I've accepted that. I guess we just get the black um, spore to her. Yes, I assume we do that. The trio, well, that might be a conversation for later. Maybe. We need to figure... Maybe after she gets the black spore and does her own research. It sounds like, though, the research you figured out at the end is that some sort of anti-magic will slow down the disease if we can get that into some sort of potion or a, oh, yeah. Why a don't we tablet. Just so, Animus, as you're kind of talking this out, there's like a nagging thought in the back of your head. You know of a location on the plane that has no magic, no magic works in it. I've been there. My finger was in there. You guys remember the ziggurat below Whitestone yeah. prevents magic. Well, I don't know if I want to... Wait, hold on, hold on. Holy shit, it's remember the ziggurat? Take them and we move them to the ziggurat. I don't know if we want to move uh, the Spencer girl to the ziggurat. I see the fun you did there. Move. It was all, you know. <laughs> no, Came no. On. <laughs> well, she's in Iman. And the current political climate in Whitestone that me and Zygon have uh, experienced uh, this week, earlier this week, was um, not the most comfortable uh, compared to what we would want her to feel. And I definitely don't want to lock the Spencer girl down in the ziggurat uh, in just a dark location that maybe see well, but... i don't see why she lives we throw away the keys we're good to go well there's the, also the ziggurat glows by the way her family has a it's lot of her. money if there's a way we can figure out how to get a daily potion she can take that cancels out magic i mean that may not be the worst thing or even just have a a cleric on her at all times that uh constantly does yeah. some sort of anti-magic spell on her i don't know perhaps Funneling magic into the arcane disease might not be the best thing in the world. Well, it'll slow it down. You need to funnel an anti-magic spell into it. I don't know. Theo, what are your thoughts on this? Theo, what did uh, what'd you roll on your check? 16. 16? So you begin reading um, that the notes that Anzu has copied word for word. Beautiful craftsmanship, by the way. Great calligraphy. <laughs> just like premium uh, th these um, these notes are in the form of a journal uh, and they're dated um, so the first one is dated 
I have to pull up the book because it has different months. Uh, so it's dated the uh, the first of Sindistar, which is essentially summer. I think like July. Um, so it is a uh, it's a record from a uh, a drow cleric, uh, a cleric of Loth, who um, is reporting the findings, and uh, it basically says that. Uh, through research and through talking with the uh, the villagers, basically what happens is that the the disease um, targets um, individuals uh, that are elven. It, it but it mainly only affects high elves and wood elves. It doesn't seem to affect drow. That's why the drow are able to help them so much, uh, and that's kind of the first stage of their research. Uh, you see another entry from about three days later, and uh, they talk about how um, the children are being affected more severely than the adults. Uh, the children, they deteriorate faster, um, and they, they tend to die a lot quicker. Like, basically, if a kid contracts it, they found that they die within three weeks. Um, next entry this is about a month later um, the population of the village has gone from a thousand to uh, 300 and it is affecting old people the least um, and through research they found that the, uh, the disease latches on to um the uh the cells of the body and it, it it's essentially kind of like a cancer the way that it works um and then it attacks nerve tissue uh first uh primarily in the legs and hands um they get down to and you start flipping through faster because it's a lot of the same information accounting who died when stuff like that uh, you get to the last entry, and uh, this is talking about how there's only 20 left. Um, they do range in age, and uh, one one of them is a family of four. Um, the father is a woodcutter, and the mother is a baker. Um, the children are, for elves, they're young. Um, they're they're classified as children because elves elves age weird um and uh another group of three are all um like craftsmen you you notice that all of them are somehow proficient in some sort of craft or um like woodworking leatherworking um weaving uh forge stuff like that and then there's a uh there's a small like note written off to the side in the margins that says arcane aptitude and then it's a question mark a lot of information there weird okay <clears throat> Here, I'll, very strange I'll, I'll start it off where where i asked you that question so it sounds it sounds more seamless um yes yeah, andrew um thea uh so what do you think of all this uh what do you think we should do for the spencer girl um if there's some sort of anti-magic potion we can create or even just take her back to whitestone um I mean, I think it's worth a shot. Um, some experimenting could be in order if she's up for it. Um, if there was, like, a way to create, like, a potion out of, like, an anti-magic shield spell could be useful, maybe. I don't know. 
something along those lines, or maybe a dispel magic potion. Yeah. There are uh, some, I believe, some maybe spells out there that block magic, but they're unknown to me. Uh, I think it's doable. I think a second thing, Anzu, maybe we send out some sort of flyer or or paper to major cities across Taldore and and even other continents in Exandria and see if anyone else has this disease currently in our world because uh, I think if if someone may be farther along than the Spencer girl or maybe not as far along then they could also be helpful in the research and even then we could just help them without them even volunteering if we can find a way to cure it i do have an idea maybe i could do some more research and find a way to you know materialize spell magic in the form of a pill or something it would be i need you to make a perception check Brady. Wait, it was me? I, you kept it yeah. at the beginning on? Sorry about oh, that. Perception. Zygon perception oh, check. It's <laughs> a uh, 13. Okay. So while Animus and Anzu are kind of devising a plan, Blocknar is almost finished with his tower. Um, and Thea is kind of flipping back through the um the notes you start to hear um this whispering in the back of your mind um not super familiar whispering but you uh you hear it and it sounds like it's coming from the notes do i understand what it's saying it's just incoherent whispers. But it's kind of drawing you towards these notes. A, and nobody else hears it? Mm-hmm. That I can tell? Mm. Of course not. <clears throat> Alright. And where are the notes? Are they just sitting on this table? Uh, Thea, Thea's flipping through them. He just okay. leans into the notes a little bit. Yeah, it's like Horton here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna scooch on over. Okay, so you begin reading the notes over the shoulder. Um, nothing in it is striking you. Like nothing that Thea didn't already say. Do you see? Um, but that whispering is getting a little bit louder as you get closer. Can I, uh, can I see those? Why? No reason. Just curious. Figure I could help. Insight check. <laughs> he was up there researching with us. Yeah, go ahead and roll an insight check. It's an 11. No, it's a 12. Um, Zygon's pretty hard to read. Normally. But, um, it does seem like like he's not trying to mess with you he's not like pranking you or anything it seems like he has some legitimate concern of wanting to help here be careful because i'm a good guy i like... hand him over and i'm gonna like keep a close eye okay because <clears throat> they're useful obviously so zygon you take the notes i need you to make a uh wisdom saving throw excellent Uh, 21 okay so um you grab these notes you begin reading them you see the text starts to float off of the page no one else it's not doing any of this for any of you so it begins to float off the page and it actually goes like into your eyes and then you just you get sucked into this 
black void. Uh, you guys see that uh, it looks like Zygon's just reading these notes. You know, he's just flipping through them. You know, he hymns and haws every once in a while. He's like, hmm, you know, performative studying. Um, Zygon, you begin yes. rushing, 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 and you see uh, at the bottom is this patch of grass, and then you <laughs> land into it, landing on your feet. You look around. Stuck the landing. Stuck the landing. Let's go. You look around, and you see um, everything looks normal. You're in a forest. That's weird. You weren't in a forest about five seconds ago. Uh, I need you to make a perception check. Okay. I already regret doing this. It's a seven. Don't worry, it was a DC five. Oh, thank God. Nice. It's very obvious to see. So you begin looking around your surroundings, and you see above you this large um, blimp that is just puttering along over the forest. You see that the back of the um, the blimp is powered by a giant crystal made from pure arcane energy. And it's just powering this blimp as it goes... Poof. And then you see... Okay. Um, you, you begin walking around uh, and you get to this cliff edge. Over the cliff edge... You see this vast city, um, and you realize you're in a mountainous area. Um, hmm. It's there's snow on the peaks. You see the city is built into the side of a mountain, and it goes up the mountain. Um, you also see these strange, um, like they're they're kind of like chariots or wagons, but they're attached to this large cable. And they they go across this large cable. Uh, for for everyone, it's a cable car, uh, and it you see it's also powered by arcane energy, going in and out of the city. You also see a few going from the city up to another mountain, uh, and you see some people skiing, uh, like far off. You see like skiers, and it's kind of resort like a ski resort sort of thing. Are they good? Are the skiers good? Or are they fall? Uh, make a perception check. They getting their their pizza hot dogs down, mm. or French fry. It's a six. Uh, you know some Not of very them. Today. You've never seen uh skiing done like this before, you know. But uh, some of them are falling down, and you think mm, that's probably not right. Probably don't want to fall down. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're you're taking in this vista. Uh, and then you hear this poo, poo, and you see steam coming up from the valley below and you look down and you see a contraption very similar to the one that you saw in Whitestone that was being built. Uh, you see a train oh. that's coming into the city. Uh, your vision, the, the wind and the snow begins to pick up, hitting you in the face. Your vision fades and then you're in that train. You see it okay. racing by. Uh, you look, uh, over, uh, through the, the car that you're in, you see families of all different races. You see a goblin family with their eight children. They're trying to wrangle them as they're running around. Uh, you see two half orcs that are sitting just very patiently looking out the window. Uh, you see a dwarf, uh, next to his daughter, uh, as they both, as he points out a few things, uh, pointing out the cable cars and telling her how they work. Uh, sitting next to you is a uh, young man. Uh, he's got um, short, like, dirty blonde hair. Um, he's probably, he's got peach fuzz, like, down on his chin, but nothing super, uh, super detailed there. Um, you see he's got... Um, uh, He's got robes on that um, they look kind of like religious robes, uh, like what you would see a cleric wear when they're not in full armor. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just gazing out the window. Um, 
but he doesn't appear to see you. Nobody appears to see me, really? No. No. Can I, like, wave my hand in front of his face just to make sure? Nothing. Alright. Can I pick up from any conversations on where we're headed? Um, make an investigation check. Or a perception check, I'll let you choose. Investigation it is. Both of those have been terrible for you today, so. I know. You do uh, 21. Mm-hmm. So you listen in on a few, um, a few of the conversations, and uh, you hear the uh, dwarf girl with her father. You hear her say, I can't wait to go to Belmere, Dad. I've always wanted to see where you work. Do uh, I know anything about that? Yeah. It's a 10. Um, maybe it's up in the north. Maybe it's on that other continent you haven't been to. But you've never really heard of a place called Belmere. Okay. Uh, can I keep walking around the train, just kind of checking it out? seeing what's going on so as you go to do that the train enters a tunnel and your vision goes dark again and you uh you reappear in uh this large chapel uh you see um this is a chapel that's on the more bottom tier of the city um walking next to you is the uh young man that you were sitting next to in the train he uh he kind of walks with his head bowed. You see his hood is now up, um, and on the uh, on the side of the hood, you see um, you see this visage of um, a face, and from left to right, you see it go from being like young all the way to skeleton. Like it's the full transition. Um, mm. Interesting. Can I, uh, can I check his pockets? Uh, sure. Since he can't see me? Sure. Do I have to roll for that? Uh, yeah. Go ahead and make a sleight of hand check. Excellent. It's a 17. Nice. So you go to check his pockets and your hand passes through the Uh, pocket. It appears that you are not. You're. It, it's like you're on the ethereal plane, basically. Like you can't interact with anything here. You can only witness it. Well, that sucks. Okay. Um. I keep so following him. You um. You follow him, and uh, he leads you into this large um, cathedral, uh, like the. Uh, where where the service would be held um it's very like it's very much like catholic church inspired like there's a large organ you see there's candles lit um you see this large stained glass window of um a what appears to be a goddess of some sort um you also see standing sentinel underneath the uh stained glass is this large angel that's probably about nine feet tall um, she's in full battle armor, uh, black wings that she's like wrapped around her body, uh, in preparation. She's holding a sword and she, she's watching the guy that you're standing next to as he comes in. Interesting. Okay. Do I, can I make a history check to see if I know her or something? Yeah, go ahead. Or, uh, yeah, I guess that'd be history. Or would that be religion? Uh... You can choose. One it doesn't matter. It's the same. <laughs> he dropped the thing. I did. I did the thing. I the thing. 13. Uh, you do not recognize this large, angelic woman. Um, it, you, you think you'd remember her uh, if you'd ever seen her before. What's the vibe I'm getting? 
Uh, make a insight check. Or as we like to call it, a vibe check. A vibe check, yeah. I failed. Mm. Hard to read, angels. Um, yeah. The overall feeling of the... Um, the overall feeling of the area is very somber, though. Um, but yet there's this strange hint of, like, uh, Irish wake sort of feel. Like, uh, it's more of a celebration of life than it is a, uh, a funeral. And you notice uh, that the... You thought the angel was standing sentinel over the stained glass. That's not true. You see there's this large um, glass coffin uh, sitting open. And you see uh, arms crossed, ready to be buried, an older man um, who you can see he was cut from his uh, left shoulder all the way down to his right hip. Um, it doesn't appear like they're trying to hide it either. Um, there's no He's not even wearing like a top. He's like, you can see the full cut. Like they've sewn it up, but like the cut is clearly visible. Um and the young man you're uh, uh, you're walking with, he gets down in front of the coffin and he begins to uh, he kneels and he begins to pray. Uh, make a perception check. I switch die. Uh, we'll see what happens. Here. It's a nine. I'm going back. <laughs> I'm switching dice again. Um, it's not that hard of a check. There's not many people in here. Um, but, uh, you hear him praying to the goddess Winogear, uh, in hopes that, um, Master, uh, Car uh, Kythias will pass on peacefully. Um. Uh, you then hear the angel uh, say, Marcaeus, you come to pay respects. And his hood falls down and he, he looks up at her. There you see tears uh, welling in his eyes. Yes, yes I do. And then uh, the angel examines him more thoroughly. That surprises me. Uh, Marcaeus looks up at her and uh, says, Why? Why would that be? You see, she begins to draw her sword. She says, Because the killer does not normally want to pay their respects. Oh, shit. She brings the sword down on him. And you see he pulls a sword from his side. And uh, this sword is quite familiar. Um, it almost killed you. Uh, you see... Five dragon heads light on the blade. Oh, no. Oh, as it God. blocks no. the angel's sword. Uh, and then your vision changes again. You see the... You are now standing on a on the cliff that you initially saw. You are now standing on that cliff again. Uh, Marcaeus is next to you, and then there are three women next to him. Um, ranging in age from around 16 to probably 30. Um, and you feel this heat. And then you hear screaming, and then you turn, and you see this city is on fire. The entire city is on fire. You also see uh, Marcaeus has a scar down uh, his his uh, right eye now that he's like covering. John style. Um, and uh, you see he's got a uh, he's holding in his hands this small orb that pulses with this purplish energy. And uh, then he says, "Our duty." Is a hard one to carry. And then you're back in your body back in the tavern. 
Well, that's weird. <laughs> you guys see Zygon flipping through the notes, and then just suddenly oh, he jolts as if he's he's just waking up. Oh. Did something catch your attention, Professor Zygon? Zygon, don't scare me like that. It's a bit, a bit of a sea alcohol. He, 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 yeah, he, he, he's a bit of a lightweight, so give him a break. <laughs> oh. You're muted, uh, Abby. You're good. Forgot I was. I muted myself to eat. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna like snatch the book back from him and be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> a lot of things. All right, a lot of things. Um, so that was weird. Heard a weird, uh, little, little whisper coming from the notes. And when I picked him up, I had a, a vision as I want to do. Always. Yeah. With the whispers too, you know, it's kind of my thing. And what was the vision? Well, I was on a train. It was strange. Do you know what a train is? No. Oh, yeah. We saw one, we saw, uh, one being built in Whitestone. Or at least hmm. that's what? what percival called it he called it a train yes mm. we kind of explained it to the others uh, i don't know they've never seen one before obviously. it's very in your world it's extremely experimental tech it's like the cutting edge of arcane technology get with the times Thea. yeah stay woke no <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> i was uh and i saw a familiar face the uh <laughs> The man that uh, I followed back from the tournament and about killed me. This is actually the first time that you have seen... That vision is the first time you've seen his actual face. Because he normally wears a uh, dragon mask. That's right. But uh, he got into a, he went to a funeral. He got into a fight with an angel with black wings. And then uh, he burned down... What was the, what was the town? Bell... Belmere. Belmere. He burned down Belmere. Do we know of Belmere? So again, not me burning down a city. Uh, the guy? four of you make history checks. <clears throat> Lognar, what'd you roll? <clears throat> okay, so Lognar, uh, oh. you once burped and it sounded like you said Belmere, so maybe that's what he's talking about. Belmere! I yeah. think we should follow his lead. He, I think he's onto something. <laughs> he yeah, is 19. definitely 18. 19. 18. What's that sound? Seven. Seventeen. Wait, you went nineteen, eighteen, seventeen. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Okay. Let's go, guys. Uh, none of you know anything about a town ever named that. Fuck ever. no, guys. What the fuck did we waste that shit for? Uh... <laughs> You've never heard of it. Uh, does anyone know languages super well? Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, I got giant. I got giant. So specific um, languages or just like overall? Like dwarven. Does anyone know dwarven? Yeah, I know dwarven. Okay, so Animus, this piques your interest a little bit. Uh, Belmere uh, is it's similar to a few different words in um, Dwarven, uh, but it's like a few syllables off. It's a few consonant sounds off. Um, but you, uh, there's some familiarity there with the way that it would be constructed. So that's, that, I just know. But it was, it was like, it, it was like built into a mountain. It was quite strange. And uh, I don't know if it was present day or if it was a vision of the future. Because the train wasn't complete whenever we were in Whitestone. Recently. True, and it definitely wouldn't be the past. And if you saw him, what was he doing? Well, they went to Where went was to the funeral. funeral? Where? Was that... It was at a church, I'm assuming, in the town, and he apparently killed the guy, which is kind of strange to go to a funeral after you kill a guy. I mean, Great this man him. seems pretty old. He's a religious man. Religious um, how? He prayed. To who? Uh, to who? Winnow gear. He had a medallion that had a face that uh, was the range of a lifetime. Kind of interesting. Yeah, that does not ring any bells in any religion that you have ever... The closest one is probably the Raven Queen. Would but, I know that that's yeah, not the Raven there. Queen? You didn't, yeah, you didn't know didn't for hear sure. Name. His name was... Uh, 
was it Marcus? Mark out? Uh, his name was Marcus. Marcus. Yes. He was at the funeral of a man named Caithius. And uh, after he left the funeral, I saw him standing with three women, and they had a pulsing stone. Um, Animus. Yes. Um, when, when Zagon says these three women, you remember when the uh, dragon sword person spared your life uh, that there were three women with them. Oh, fuck me. Well, it's gotta be something in the future. I, We just saw those three women in him. I don't know if anyone else saw him, but... Um, Braun would have. He, he Animus, just make, here. make a history check. Those are the three women he f that follow him around. One of them is a... Uh, two of them are magical. One's a fighter, I believe. Uh, it could be in the past. History? Well, yeah. trains haven't been created yet uh, fully, and Zoo, we've only me and Zygon have even heard of them from Whitestone, and we don't really know how they run other than the magic that the airship used. Uh, 25. What if, it's, what if it's a different dimension or plane? And, like, it could be, like, ancient history. It could be... I've never heard of any trains in our ancient history. Oh. A different dimension <laughs> so, would be the best thing. Animus, um, through Zygon's description of these women, one of them being a teenager, um, the women that you saw were all fully grown, full-aged women. One of them was in probably her 60s. Um, one, mm. And one was an elf, so you don't know how old she is. Age progression. All right, so second, I have a second. I have a secondary. He's got a crowd of women. I have a secondary thought to add to Zygons that I just completely remembered out of just out of nothing. Uh, just kind of came to me in a voice. Um, the three women, actually, that I saw were not young. Like yeah, none of them were young. Like Zygons. I mean, one of them was an elf, so it's hard to know if she was young or old or not. Or, well, am I was, right, Thea? Zygon. Uh, <laughs> he now knows how old I am. Zygon, you explain them to be <laughs> well, between I guess the ages. We could make a good hypothesis. Sixteen and thirty-ish. Yeah. There was no. I'm not, I'm not good with ages, but yes. Well, I can assure you that if there was one that looked like she was coming into an elderly age, you would be able to tell. Uh, so. At least one of them looked like that. One was an elf, and then the other one was also a little bit older than any of the ages you told me. So maybe it was in the past, or it probably was a different dimension, as Thea just said. I mean... Winogear is from a different dimension, and <clears throat> if... I don't know, I'm just putting two and oh. two together. If the vision came from the book about this disease, maybe it has something to do with her. Oh, fuck. Yeah, he was praying to win it, win a, win a gear. Oh, God. Oh, this, could, this couldn't get worse. Was that important? I mean, yes and no. A little no. bit. The biggest, the, I, if you put it all together, this guy has already done this with his three sidekicks exactly how he wanted to in a different dimension where Winogear was a god and she couldn't stop him and now he's in our dimension and she's here trying to tell us like hey uh here's you bring me the black spore i'm gonna i'm gonna try to stop this for you and we haven't brought up this dude to her yet so maybe we should probably bring that up to her whenever we give her the sample because what, what if is... he is from a different dimension? He's just going through dimensions and just destroying them. Oh, him. I don't know. I miss. I had an old friend who told me that death is always an option. You can die if you want to. I'm not. Oh. I'm not... Why would you say that? No, I'm just saying anyone can die if they want to. It's just you got to push harder to be able to fight. <laughs> uh, all right. Well. Inspirational quote from Animus. Put it on a shirt. Put it on a mug. <laughs> Either he brought the black spore here in an effort to wipe out the elves on this plane, or he's an agent of Winogear, and I, that thought makes me more nervous. Anzu, did you see, um, uh, when you were researching, I mean, I know I was there too, 
Uh, yeah. Do you remember, uh, or do I remember, Jacob? Um, uh, who the any descriptions of the trio that came through town? Uh, it was a man and a woman and a little girl. That's stupid. Uh, one was human, one was elven, and then the little girl they didn't really know. Because the, the couple was kind of obscuring her and not really letting the village know who she was or anything. They said that she was sick and that they were just passing through. I don't know. Um... Well, I'm going to take a triumphant mm -hmm. chug of my milk stout because I helped. <laughs> yes, you did, Zygon. Yes, you did. We should get this sample back to Winogear as soon as we possibly can and speak with her. And we also know that the way to at least temporarily stop this, if you are, if you or anyone else wants to work on an anti-magic serum or pill, or potion, or even just a spell. Uh, you, or you can ask me or Anzu, or we can even message back to uh, Iman and see if some of our guild members can look into some of the high clerics there. So, Jacob, I remember a long, long time ago when we were like shopping one time, um, I bought a book about making potions because at that point I think I still wanted to be a helpful cleric. Could I Those pull that out days, and do huh? some? Those were the days, huh? <laughs> um, <clears throat> could I like pull that out and start reading a little bit and see if there's anything? Yeah. So about... um, you begin reading. It's going to be really, really hard to make anything that involves dispelling magic, um, or beings that are inherently inherently magical so um it could be a poison if not prepared properly because elves dwarves gnomes um tieflings uh genasi they all inherently have magic in them um it's just some it's a lot more developed than others that's that's another reason why sorcerers randomly pop up in all races because there is inherent magic in all living people. Um, and the there has been some research done um, into like magic potions to dispel magic to get rid of like curses or po certain magical poisons. Um, but it usually does more harm than good because of it would it would attack the, the body of the person too because of how, they are iner inherently magical. Now, a human who's like a like a fighter who doesn't use any magic, who hasn't developed any sort of magical capability, it'd probably be fine. Someone who's never really developed their magical capability would probably be okay. But someone who, like, if Anzu were to drink a Dispel Magic potion, it might kill him. Is that kind of somewhere I mean, in the be way fair, that these might be? Dispel the magic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> is, oh no, you're fine. That's funny. That's a good point. Um, but is that similar in the way that the disease might work? Is it latches on to the magical aspects of like? Because you theory. said like the there were craftsmen that were mostly left um, in the village, and so maybe those who hadn't developed their magical abilities were I mean, that a little be a bit safer. You could talk to some of the researchers about and see if they knew any other information okay uh well if we um if we've gotten all we need to out of here uh do we need to be in this city anymore or because our time is definitely short i'm not trying to push anyone out of anything but oh right. what is our next destination uh, Anywhere but here, because I don't even know that we have somewhere to sleep. Well, all right, everyone, hold my hands. Wait, Enzu. Let's yeah. pick a place, though. I have to head north. Then walk. Uh, I are you not going? <laughs> am I just going alone? <laughs> well, why do you no. need to go north? I have to what? go north. You missed the snow. No, for the Aramente, for my quest. What the fuck is that? Oh my. 
Oh, we've been Aaron doing Hill? this. I know what it is, but... But Anzu doesn't care, is what I think he's trying to get Fair across. Enough. Anzu, I feel like Makes this sense. is something you'd be very interested in. I can actually invite you into the city this time. It's an elemental city. Elemental city of fire. <clears throat> It'd what be, are we doing? It'd be well. We'll head north, and I have to finish my quest there. And then, as soon as we do that, we can head back to Amon, where we need. Give me Let's head... a. Do you have an object from there? From never I've there. never been there yet. It's it's a. It's Let's actually... just head back up directly where we where we came from. This... Can you give me a Maybe description? Outside. What about Chance? I can't give you a description. I We're gonna have to travel to there on foot. We don't need it. I mean, <laughs> it would be fun to keep him as a pet. Yeah, there's a say. way straight up. We can recruit him. Oh no, you're right. No, you're right. No, we should probably go back the way we came. Uh, and to answer mm -hmm. your question, um, no, we're gonna have to walk through the rest of the uh, Vesper Timberlands to get to uh, the. Mm -hmm. Fire Shari's village. But I thought it would interest you. No one ever sees the Fire Shari. No one ever sees the Earth Ashari, the Air Ashari. No one ever sees them because they're on fire. No, no one ever sees them because they are hidden. Man, and only, only someone on an Aramente really can find them, other than a couple other small instances. Can't have a drink with him. Uh, well, they're not all on, on fire. fire. They're just special druids who deal with fire it's like me i'm not on, i'm just not made of air but i'm a druid focused on an air village you know my tiny legs oh not not the great and so our horses are still up there you know oh yes i miss butch all right we'll be able to go up and get butch from the village and we can head north and then from there we can Start planning our way into Westrun and maybe uh, probably go back to Oman first, check on the guild and see and gather as many allies as possible, including once again Thea's father and the entire city of Singorn, possibly. Thea, yeah, I just want I just want you to keep that in your mind that we are going up against multiple entire cities. I think we're gonna need an entire city's help. And Iman is not that city. Iman's too broken. It's... It is not a good place to ask. I just think if I have to find out one more horrible family secret, I think I might lose it. I feel like I just feel like there's no more. You know, I think you figured it all out. Everything else is you could have no, another. No, it's just, I keep, I keep. Oh, don't remind me. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> if, if the god, if whatever god is, is your half uh bother nope, that's not, really not how that all. works that's nope. not how that works you don't have half fathers i don't know They're how not that really no that animus is not your daddy what thank god for that i'm glad we cleared that one up um well do we need to figure out any more things here in in this city no but i think we should let what's her name what's what's her name the one that spencer one gal girl. Captain? spencer girl yeah or the captain amelier oh should we let her know we're leaving or should we just go we should probably let her know um let's also run some uh maybe get like some final research in maybe or are we okay. good i mean we could i would love to know what they think of my theory about you know, magical beings and the, or I don't know. I, I mean, it could be good to run it by someone. I, think, I don't know if it's like fully. I think we've run by a lot of stuff by these researchers and we, the next step is to get the sample to, uh, Winnow gear and see what she comes back with. And then if we need to, we can always come back. We know where this is. I've seen all the trees around this village. I can teleport Earth us here. Zero. You're in the underdark. What? Exactly. Do we village, find? Up in the village. Oh, in the and top. Yeah, down, yeah. And then Anne can always bring us back. Dimensional being. Does she just pop up? Let's see. Is she here? We need. I 
point. She said she would be wherever... I don't know. She would be there. I'm sure... She's a mysterious multi-dimensional being. I'm sure she can figure it out. Let's just yeah, head back up. I guess. Try to get the sample to her. And then head north. Lochner, grab some booze for the road, my friend. Ugh, fine, fine, fine. Maybe buy a couple cakes uh, on Anzu. Lochner, yeah. as, uh, as uh, you're beginning to go try and find some uh, alcohol for the road, uh, you see this uh, moving stalagmite uh, come over with his tentacles. You guys leaving already? think so. Well, okay. I have never seen one of those before. It's a roper. <laughs> it's a living oh, stalag. It, it's a living stalagmite uh, with a giant eye in the center. It, it, it's like a flesh rock. Uh, real weird. Real weird. I'm gonna look it up. If you have a need to work somewhere, let me know. Well, I kind of like my job here. Oh, I forgot they have uh, dragon turtles. Sure that offer is rescinded. Well, okay. <laughs> but, uh, Lagnar, you get some booze for the road, and that will be where we take tonight's break. Okay, welcome back, everybody. So, uh, the group, Lagnar has secured travel and booze for you guys. I'd like to restock hey. on some, uh, a few more, like, like some decent traveling food instead of just, like, Rations, and, rations stuff. and stuff, yeah. Lambus bread? How much is that going to cost? You get some nice bread. Uh, we'll say a silver to get enough bread for everybody for about a week. and right. It's pretty simple. You do notice um, this bread is darker. Uh, and it is made. it is not made from your traditional wheat or other flours. Okay. Mm. Interesting. You can inquire more if you wish. Uh, nah. We, uh, Anza's gonna end up teleporting us back to Iman, so. <laughs> Alright. So what are you guys doing? Okay. Oh, we're walking. North. I'm grabbing Anza's hand. Like, yeah. uh, are we gonna, like, find a way to teleport back up to the village, or? And I'm gonna grab Thea's hand. Hey. Okay. <laughs> so you guys all join hands. Uh, Anzu, where are you trying to teleport to? Straight uh, to a volcano. Uh, where teleport to? I can to the place we are going. You've never seen. None of us have ever seen it before. So I would. None of you have ever seen that. You would I be would able to go up to where we came from. Yeah, just yeah, go well, straight just up. Walk out, and then you. Go to a tree and then. No, teleport us. Just teleport us straight out. So there well, are. Don't we have to go through like yeah, but to I get. I only use it once a day. Yeah, so. we're probably gonna. We're have gonna to, camp. We're it's gonna have like to the camp. Nighttime. It's almost nighttime. Yeah, it's around. Oh, okay. It's yeah. Because of the moon and everything. <clears throat> It'll take us like four hours to Clinch get back my through. With my with my Slayer, you know, brand on there, and teleport. Okay. So uh, I need you. Okay, here we go. Okay. So you guys all, uh, for a split second, pop out of existence, and you feel your consciousness traveling through the Earth, uh, the few hundred miles that you're below it, um, and you eventually you land, and you're inside uh, the blacksmith house that was in the uh, village that you guys first saw. <laughs> nice. Cord and Anzu just teleported us back up to the surface in that village we started in. <laughs> and then i know last time we didn't like disturb any of like the zombies that were like just wandering around but can we just kind of like actually no do we need to go back and find winnow gear should we try and do that jacob we can't hear you yeah i'm down let's do it oh sorry um hello hmm. there you go 
Right. Take a perception check for me, Thea. Okay. I can do that. Also, our unicorn is with our unicorn. Our Pegasus oh, is with God. us. I threw it everywhere. Ah, she threw it everywhere. Peggy the Pegasus is in the house with I us. I did that once. That's where we left him. Uh, it's not great, but it is a an eighteen. Don't you have anyway. like a plus eleven to your perception? Fifteen to three. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so you listen to the uh, to the night since that's more where you feel at home. And uh, you don't hear any shambling or any sort of ugh noises from the zombies that were present. Okay. Smudge. Hmm. Smudge. The menace that is uh, Smudge. I'll look at the group the and say, um, <laughs> he's so cute. Um, I'd like to try and go find the clearing that we met one of gear in. Um, if anyone wants to join me, or I'll go alone, and then we can find a place to make camp. I mean, I think it's, uh, I mean, we had to travel pretty far east to get to this village, northeast, so we can head back that way towards some of the more used trails and head north from there. It's kind of on the way back to the trails, so. Is that like a long walk, Jacob, or is it like doable? Uh, right to get to where you saw Winnegar like, last? Yeah, I can't mm. remember. I think it was like it's two, probably a few hours. It was like two hours. Yeah. Oh, that's a long one. What time is it again? It's late, It's about right? ten in the evening. A little late. Never mind. These are some scary woods to also be traveling in. Yeah. Lockner, make, Lockner, make a perception check for me. Natural 20! Yeah! So, uh, Vlachnar, you you don't really care if you go see old lady that was young lady and then ate a deer or whatever. You don't really care about yeah. that. That doesn't really matter to you. Uh, but that, you... That's a very good explanation of what what she is. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway. you, uh, you get a thought in your brain. You're like, wait, okay, we're in a blacksmithing place. I bet there's booze somewhere in this place. So your booze senses tingle, and you begin uh, looking around, and you feel a slight breeze coming from uh, one of the walls, like this ever so slight, um, maybe because of your danger sense. Um, but you you knock on this uh the wall you begin knocking along the wall and it goes and you hear it's hollow on the other side of this section of the wall um um is is there anything that seems to be out of place um or look like kind of switch like with a natural 20 on your perception check yeah um you notice there is a small seam in the wall where this would like open. He's gonna get his fingers behind. Oh, well, he, first he's going to look behind. Are they occupied? Yeah, none of Am them I are really paying occupied? attention. Yeah. Then, ever so slightly, he opens it. Lockner and Nisha make a dexterity saving throw with advantage. Nice. Things you 16. Love Did you roll with advantage? Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. Okay. Um, wait, do I add my... You add your dexterity yeah, modifier? Yeah. So that's uh, 18. 18. So you slowly slide this panel, which is very, very heavy. Um, you slide this panel, uh, and you hear, and you see a dart coming directly at your face. Uh, I need Animus to make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, so Lochner, you dodge out of the way as it goes right past your, uh, your beautiful beard. That's cocked. 
That's you can worse than dodge nothing. a dart, you can dodge a ball. Ten. Ten. So, uh, Animus, you uh, you feel this, and it hits uh, it hits the leather uh, of the armor that you're wearing, and it doesn't it doesn't hit you. Duh. What? What was? Lactar. Uh, what the fuck? I don't know if he knows that we can't hear him. Hello? Caleb, can you hear us? Yeah. Oh, what? Okay. Yeah, we couldn't hear you that whole that whole uh, acting scene oh, that you just did. I was like, ah, oh, God, what the fuck, Lockdown? What was that? <laughs> so, uh, you guys begin, uh, you, Animus, you're looking down at the dart, and you see that it's, it's twisting. It's going... Uh... Rotating around, and you guys hear this clicking noise as it's rotating. I want to back away. Okay, Zygon, you back away. Right, I'm getting on the floor. I've got a okay. really bad feeling about this. <clears throat> the chamber opens up, and a fireball releases, hitting all of you but Lochnar. So I need you I to back all. Away. Uh yeah, I need you to all make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, Wait, can I counterspell it? Um, you can try. Can you counterspell okay. something that's a trap and not? It's a reaction. Well, so this is the reaction. Is but is so I'll it... say, I'll say that you have the reaction to do it, but the AC is going to be a little bit higher. But is it coming from a creature? Or is it coming from a trap? It's coming from something that's enchanted that's triggering. So technically, the spell is casting on the trigger. Okay. Okay. I've I haven't used this in a while. Yeah, you haven't had to do anything. Except <sighs> man, it's where you don't fight magical stuff. You fight stuff that has inherent abilities. Do I just make a straight roll? Uh, yeah. Just, uh, just Jacob, you know, getting... Do you use your spellcasting spell. ability modifier, um, added. Oh, so my intelligence? Yeah. yeah. I rolled pretty well. I'm gonna take some damage, but I rolled pretty well. Uh, that would be... Same. 18. All right, so you guys see the, and as you're jumping out of the way to try and avoid it, you see Anzu's hand go up, and the spell fizzles, and the dart just falls to the ground. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. Well wow, I'm getting a lot better at this rogue shit. Anzu, <laughs> God, <laughs> Professor Zook. So, Machnar, oh, yes. while the others are distracted with this explosion that you don't care about because it's not hitting you. Um, maybe a little bit care about that it's hitting Thea or Anzu, but meh, the rest, whatever. Um, it's more smelly than anything, honestly. Yes. Uh, you see a, uh, small chest that's sitting on the floor, and you see the mechanism that shot the dart is above it. And it's, the chest is probably, I mean, it's no wider than this notebook. Hmm. Does it look like there's any more booby traps around it? No. Okay, so you open it. Uh, you see a small uh, bracer. Like a, basically a bracelet. Like a, like it will go on your wrist and then it goes to about the middle of your forearm. And then you see another one. And there's two. Let's All put right, on. I need you to make a uh, constitution saving throw. Do I get my demon too? Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting boys. a demon. Uh, 17. Okay. So you put these on, and they immediately they stick to your hands, and you see they the metal folds up, and you're now you have full on like gauntlet knuckle like they have spikes on the end basically punching stuff weapons um punching stuff weapons. but uh Sorry, you feel mothers. this you feel your heart kind of like it, it beats weirdly um but you kind of steady yourself and you see blood coming out from underneath the bracers oh does it hurt uh, I mean, you take you take ten points of damage. It's dug like okay, you can, 
So you you begin flexing your arms to try and figure out what's going on. You can feel something is scraping the bones in your arms. Oh. That really hurts. What the hell is that? What, is, what are you doing? Lagnar, what the fuck are you doing over there? You just almost got us killed with a trap. Uh, so um... you guys turn to see Lochnar. Uh, his left arm has a golden bracer on it, and the top of the bracer um, you see is like a snake striking. It looks like the snake is actually striking into his arm, and then the other one is a silver bracer that's doing the same thing. Um, but these things are, they look like they are attached to Lochnar. Better cut those arms off. That looks painful. Anzu, Can you I should, touch uh... you? It's very painful. Anzu, you I'd should like identify touch you. those. Yes. Can I lock now? I guess so. All right. Uh, I'll touch the gold one first. Okay. So uh, you you touch the bracer, and uh, you uh, you take a second, and uh, the identify spell lets you know. Um, that uh, these are called Sting and Viper. Um, they are magical gauntlets that attach to the user's arms until that user dies. Um, they, oh, uh, when they are activated, they deal damage to the user, and um, they are a martial weapon. They um, they function. Oh as gauntlets uh each of them dealing uh each deals 1d8 and then they deal an additional poison damage and then depending on who they're attached to they have an additional effect but you don't know what that effect is yet because lochner hasn't used them uh so but like only bad if um if they're try if you try to remove them they will dig deeper into your skin, and they will try and poison you. Can you dispel them? Um, you could try. Um, but, so each gauntlet does 1d8 plus 1d6 poison damage, and then it has an additional effect that is dictated by the user. Um, All right. I wouldn't try to take those off anytime soon. In fact, I don't think that ever come off. These are considered a cursed item. Ah, uh, they uh, are what I call a I can see why. Item. We would have to we already had to go through a cursed item when we got here with Zygon and now we're going to have oh. to Well, this is the fun. Did we get rid of that? Punches yeah. something. Uh something amazing is supposed to happen. Wait. Uh, whether it's good or bad, I don't know, but well, we'll find out. We would have done thumb wars something. the whole time though. Did can I, can I get somebody to volunteer? I, I, I gotta test this thing out. I volunteer Ready? Animus. Animus? Uh, All right. I turn into a bear. Ready? Okay. So as Lochnar's fist is coming towards you, and you see the knuckles on um, these gauntlets, each looks like a snake's fang I'd as like you're to punching. So they're essentially clawed. <laughs> you, uh, I'm gonna say that you used your reaction on the counter spell, so you don't have enough time to do that. Aww. Um, so, uh, Lochner, go ahead and roll to see if you hit. I know the general grizzly bear stats, so if he hits me with a good amount of HP, I'm, I'm out. I think it's 42 for a grizzly bear, so. <coughs> um, 15. That hits. Animus isn't really blocking the punch. So you swing. No, yeah, I was allowing it for science. Uh, you swing one of the gauntlets. Yes, for science. Uh, which which gauntlet are you? Which one's on your right fist? Is it the gold one um, or the silver one? Let, let's say the gold one's on my right fist, and okay. the silver on the left. So, uh, which fist are you swinging with? The right one, of course. Okay, so the Lochner is right-handed. So you, and uh, as you pull back, you see that uh, the fangs on the knuckles each have blood on them, uh, because you have essentially stabbed him. Uh, so nice. that's one d eight plus one d six. That's painful. That's a, that's that's this is gonna hurt a lot. 
I can still oh, feel. I just want you guys to know. I can still feel in, in, in my other forms. Well, yeah. Yeah, you won't die. No, I'm not. I can't die, obviously. Just a D8 plus a D6. Yep. D6 poison damage. Yeah, just kind of sucks. Okay. Um, you you got you got lucky. Plus, Only plus seven your attack time. modifier. Oh. Um. So that'd be twelve. Yeah, twelve. Okay. okay. And yeah. then, uh, Lochnar, I need you to roll percentage dice. Oh, I hate oh. That. oh no, okay. they're wild magic. Please no, Jacob. Ten. What'd you roll? 10%. 10%. All right. 10%. Um, okay. So as you're pulling back, um, let's see here. You see that the gauntlet, uh, begins to... Uh, radiate with um, arcane energy uh, and then uh, Lachnar I need you to make a dexterity saving throw Fifteen. Fifteen? Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Uh, Animus, you are struck by seven magic missiles. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, no. You take... Oh, four. it's all... It's This is great. That's seven. That's eleven. That's 15. I might not die. That's a lot of damage. So seven plus... You take 23 points of damage. I'm close to dead, but I... Or I'm, I'm close to losing my bear form, but I am on the verge. You're fine, sweetie. I'm gonna just come out of it and be like, Ah! Oh, fuck. Lochnar, those things are... F what the fuck was that? I don't know, but they're kind of cool, aren't they? You just Lockner, I need you to make try it again. I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Was that just the gold one, or was that both? That was just the gold that one. That was the gold one. Oh, I should have stayed in it for the silver. Shit. All right, time for round two. Yeah, I guess. Um, Nine. Uh, so Lochnar, you take twenty points of damage oh. as the gauntlet digs into your arm dear god oh no you can feel the metal of the gauntlet like encasing your arm basically like the bone in your arm it's digging in deeper and beginning to wrap around your arm uh, maybe refrain from using those you want to try the silver one uh, i kind of do but that was so fucking painful. Uh, Touche. I, I, uh, there was a lot that happened in one punch. I've never felt that before. That was like the most painful minute of my life. Yeah, God damn. the one punch man. Is it worth it though? It didn't kill me as a bear. You can do more damage with a sword than gauntlets. Occasionally. I mean, at this point, you're just punching instead of pulling a sword out. You can can I open the closet? Yeah. So this little it. hidey hole? Yeah. We've already, like, gone through the whole house. Yeah, there, so, so you, you open it and begin looking around. Um, you do notice something that Lochner couldn't see because of how tall he is. Yeah. Um, there are smaller gauntlets. Big sign that says That's... don't put these on. <laughs> yeah. Since you're a gnome, you can see. Um, so you go a little bit further back in, um, and you see a chest, probably the size of like a computer mouse, like a really small, like music box sort of. Hmm. 
Uh, I'll use Mage Hand to open it, and I'm going to point it away from me. Okay, so you the Mage Hand poof, turns it around, opens it. You can't see what's in it now. Nothing happens. Turn it around. <laughs> Okay. You see, you see a vial about this big. It's big. Okay. Uh, so this is a uh, a potion of fire walking. It allows you to walk across fire. Crazy, crazy. Seems, How are we going to? It seems that that could be fire helpful assuring. in a certain situation. It gives you resistance to fire, I guess would be a better explanation. But you or can it, walk um, on it without it taking Yeah, you could walk on fire if you drink that thing. You won't take right. very much damage at all. I'll uh, put it in my... Bag of in here, yes. Okay, so you pop that in there. I would like to look outside and uh, kind of inspect... I know Are you guys like... not going to test the silver gauntlet? Oh, god damn it! I'll turn back into a bear. Lochnar, okay. fucking punch me again. Do I have time to enlarge him? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I guess you would. No, no, you no, 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 no. If, if you do that, the house that you're in might collapse. It also breaks but... the, the control of this experiment. Oh. Okay. Uh, so, Animus, are you letting Lochnar punch you? Yep. Okay, so Lochnar, you don't have to roll to see if you hit. Go ahead and roll uh, 1d8 plus 1d6 plus your attack modifier all right thirteen damage okay um I need you to uh roll another d eight and another d six What was that? Thirteen. Mm -hmm. Seventeen. Okay. So you rolled it. Or just, just two, or or four total. Okay, four. Uh, so you punch Animus, and you see the blood uh, dripping off the knuckle, and then it goes, and it goes into the metal, and you can see the blood flowing through the metal into your arm, and you heal four hit points. No. A one heals you. One giveth and one, and one almost taketh kills away. me. So, uh, Anzu, would you like to use identify again on these gauntlets now that you've seen what Lochners do? Yes. Okay. So, the way that these gauntlets work is the silver one, when you punch something, depending on the amount of damage that the gauntlet did, you roll on a table. If you roll a certain percentage, a certain level spell is cast at a certain level. So, for example, if you deal <laughs> 20 damage, you roll a percentage dice for first level spells. That then translates into what uh, level that spell is cast at randomly. And the spells only go up to fourth level. So, it could be any? Uh, out of a select number, but yes. Oh, so it, it wasn't just going to be healing? No. Well, the so the gold gauntlet only heals you. No, wait, you flipped that around. Silver one only heals. Oh, yeah, sorry, my bad, yeah. The gold one does the other thing. Yeah, the gold one is the magic. Yeah, the gold one does the magic stuff. The silver one does the healing. And how does the healing work? Just based on uh, the amount of damage you So the, the healing does it based on the oh, amount of damage. Okay. So he deals one one d 8 plus 1d6. So he heals 1d8 plus 1d6. Ah, okay. And then the reason the uh, the uh, gold gauntlet dealt him damage is because you take a portion of the damage you dealt back with that gauntlet. Oh, all right. But you have a feeling, Anzu, that these things can change. These things are more fluid. Hmm. I would not juice as if I were you. I'm gonna come out of my bear form. Punch him for saying that. Punch him. I don't know. Do it. Zygon and I have had to be doing a ton of thumb wars over the past 
day to make sure that his cursed item doesn't do anything to him. Yeah. Jacob, yeah, at least Lochnar is like does stuff. Jacob, we've definitely been doing that. I just want to let you know. <laughs> we would have. I got you. We would have remembered that. What does yours do again, Brady? What is that? Oh, it just hurts me. I think. I can't remember. If I don't like fight, or argue or something. Yeah, if you don't fight for like an hour, every hour, your health goes half of what it is at. Like your it's... base. Yeah. 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 Until you so that's fun. Zero. And what are they? What are what? What are, what's the thing that's that he's cursed with? It's a ring. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. It's an emerald ring. Well, it yeah. looks like we have a couple cursed items that we're gonna have to try to uncurse. The classic uncurse. So, Lachnar, you feel the gauntlets begin to retract as they fold back into these bracers and you see your arms are just like there's giant puncture holes on both of your arms the uh the one with the silver gauntlet though is uh partially healed that's gross that's really gross Ew. is that my bone ew I'm gonna heal. I don't his, like this. I'm gonna heal his arms. Okay, uh, Lachnar, you go back up to full. Yeah. I would like to That's go better. outside with Ooh. Pegasus and kind of look around the village and do a little before we start, like set up a fire inside this house. I would assume there's candles in the house with us. Old, old candles. That we, yeah. Well, because we would have some sort of light right now, because it's ten o'clock at night, so we would have had to have some sort of light. So. I was assuming. Well, most of you have dark vision anyway. True. I'll light a couple candles with using produced flame, and then I'll go do uh, okay. a little checky outside, see what's going on. Okay. Uh, so you go outside. Um, none of the zombies that you saw are there anymore, and you guys begin to make a pass around the village. And you see, uh, towards where the well is, uh, you see a woman with mm, probably a teenaged girl next to her, um, just kind of waiting there. Did I go out by myself with Pegasus, or, or did they come out? Did everyone come out with me, or what happened there? I think you just went out yeah. by yourself. Okay. I'll run. You said doing like a sweep. I'm gonna look. Does it look like window gas or window gear? Window gear. Yeah. yeah. And then you see, you see a. Um, uh, probably 15, 16 year old girl, uh, with super white skin, white hair, um, and you see there's like a small blizzard, like just rolling around her. Okay, I've heard of you. Um, hey guys, the uh, Anzu, Zygon, and Lochnar. You I'll kind of poke out. Uh, I, I found her. She we didn't need to find her. We she, she she's right here. I found her. Right, maybe this is where we die. And so is this is this the little the uh the, the very mature girl that you found? Yes. Yes. I didn't want to say little. Just rolled her eyes. Just, ugh, whatever. <laughs> <sighs> but uh, you guys walk up. You see Winnegear. Um, looks like an elf woman. Um, she examines all of you. Is there, um, uh, something you have for me? We have a couple yeah. samples of the black spore. And Anzu has, uh, the most, um, unused or unresearched. We, we used a couple of them for research, so he, he has a couple vials if, if he wants to take those out. I'll pull one out. It to her. I'll pull out my like sample of the well water that I took and give it to her. Okay. So you guys give her um, almost basically everything that you guys have collected. And you see she just uh, puts it into the cloak. Um, and you see her cloak, it doesn't have an end to it. Like there's no like you can't see the back of it. It's just like a void of space. Um and a couple blood samples from Thea and Anzu. 
this will um, this will help. I hope. Um, I'm gonna look at her and say, "Do you know someone named Marqueus?" Uh, she seems to she seems to not be surprised that you know of this name, but and she was kind of anticipating that you would talk to her about this. Um, of course. <laughs> Well, all being all knowing god she's not all knowing she just knows what you guys were going to run into and she has her suspicions anyway um yes i um i knew of uh, marcus who was he he was a uh, wayward soul uh who thought it his duty to cleanse what he saw as harmfulness from our world. Is he the one who created the spore? He unfortunately did not create it. I was the one who created it. Oh, right, right, right. But did he is he the one who weaponized it? Um on our world, yes. He he uh, weaponized it, and uh, it didn't work quite as he had intended, but um, he, um, he died in his attempt to enact his plan. And he wasn't just an agent enacting your plan? Of course not. Maybe I check died? her. Yeah. What'd you say, Zygon? Did she say he died? Yes. Well, I've got news for her. What'd you roll, Thea? 25. 25. <clears throat> um, you see actual sorrow in her face. Um, she didn't have anything to do with this. Um, okay. You also see, like... You see a similar look on her face to a look that your mom had shortly before she died of of disappointment um just this this crushing feeling of I didn't do enough <clears throat> uh, uh yeah like what Saigon said he's not dead on our plane well, very uh, much alive. Very much. I assure you, he is not. I assure you, either he or what, someone uh, who's, ta who's following out with his biddings is. What happened to his uh, sword? It was quite a, a dandy weapon that I saw. Uh, his sword was a gift from one of the betrayer gods. Um that he used to kill one of my agents. He then absconded with the prototype of the Black Spore and then using unknown necromantic magic weaponized it. Um... And I know this sword is still at large because we've encountered it several times. Do you know what that has to do with anything? Is there something else at work here? Well, um, Marcaeus, um, in his plan, he had the irrational fear that the use of Arcana was going to destroy our world. Um, you see my world, our world, um, as you see, uh, Glacial kind of scoff when she says my world. Um, our world uh, is more advanced than this one. We use Arcana in um, many different aspects. I believe that if your gods had not been sealed away, um, that you would have been just as advanced, if not more, than we are. 
but um, our craftsmen, with the help of my family, um, have uh, allowed the peoples of uh, the, the sentient races, that is, uh, advance. We have mass transit, the ability to transport goods across vast distances. Um, we we have we're more advanced technologically. Well, uh, some believe that the planet only has so much arcane energy. And as such, the rampant use of our technology was causing the planet to die. So, Marcaeus, in his misguided view, believed that if he could destroy those who could use their arcane abilities, that the planet would right itself. But it had unintended consequences. Like what? Just the extermination the of elves? Of elves in our world. Um, his tinkering with the black spore um, wasn't complete, and it only affected those that had the most magical potential. It affected uh, many different races, but it hit the elves the hardest. Um, I see and eventually led to their extinction on our plane. So but why is his sword why is his sword possibly here? him here? I assure you, my friends, Marcaeus is not here. It's been I'm a different wielder him. every time. Hmm. On As far as we know, they're masked. On my plane, I am considered the goddess of death. Every soul that leaves this mortal coil I have cataloged, and I have seen. Marcaeus is one such soul. Yes, your daughter may try to tell us that our time is coming up soon. Well, his at she, least. She can be a bit of an alarmist. Glacial's lifespan is quicker than most. Which is, whatever, mom. No, it's not. She storms off, and you see the snow following her as the, the ground begins to freeze. I'm sorry, she gets temperamental this time of the lunar cycle. So how would the sword have gotten over into our dimension, into a new wielder's hands? And I mean, when he came over. Did he well, for being in the Michael hit? One such explanation is that uh, Marcaeus sent the sword here before his death, hoping that it would continue his work, because it has a mind of its own, as I'm sure you're well aware. It's certainly trying. What mind or of its own? What? your theory that he's still alive. But again, I assure you that's not correct. And he had three... Uh, women with him in uh, that Zagon had told us about and I have also previously seen but they look older in my uh, knowledge of them would they have been sent over with, over with the sword as well to continue you see she begins to think It is a possibility. Because none of them are dead, right? Uh, to my knowledge, all of them died. But, once again, maybe I'm wrong. Who are they? Their names are Hurden, oh, shit. Quind <laughs> Quindella, and Clarsena. All I got was Quindilla, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the first one is Herdin. And then the third okay. one is Clarsina. Herdin? Qu Quindella? Quindella. Quindella. 
And what was the last one? Clarcina. 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 They were also misguided acolytes of mine. I know I bear great responsibility for what is going on here. Uh, not to and ask too much. That is why I have traveled here to help. Not to ask too much about them, but uh, can you tell me which one's which just so I know for the future when we inevitably meet again? So Herden is the human barbarian woman who looks to be in her 60s. Um, Quindella is the elf. Uh, she's technically the last elf of her world. Um, she's a high elf. And then uh, Clarcena is a um, is a human as well. Do I remember their classes? Uh, not. It's hard to tell. You were in and out of consciousness. Okay. That is true. I was definitely in and out of consciousness. Uh, for being all about uh, saving your 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 world, your realm, your, your, all of that, he really didn't seem to like Belmir. What? Uh, I know this might sound foreign to all of you, but in my home, the gods and demons, devils, uh, we all walk together. Um, there is no celestial plane. There is no nine hells. Um, although some days I wish there were. Um, it is terrible what happened to Belmir. But that was... Over a hundred years ago. No fucking way. Hunter was right. Uh, I'm just saying, who's the fucking professor here? <laughs> uh, it's Zygon, <laughs> apparently. That's right, man. Captain this may Professor. Seem off topic. <laughs> Is that another one of the list? Captain Professor right. Zygon. Oh, right. <laughs> this may seem off topic, but. What do you know of my brother, Therion? You have met your brother. Don't say it like Thought that. You knew things. Don't say it like that. Don't say it like something bad happens when she meets her brother. He is my grandson. <laughs> and who is his father? Uh... I am afraid that is up to him to tell you. Dun, dun, dun. So it's close. not me, is it? Shut, Andrew, <laughs> shut up! No, I'm afraid, Professor Zook, it is not you. Oh, okay, thank you. I was unaware Can you tell of me infinity. anything about him? Um, well, my son is um, rash, reckless, uh, often gets into fights when he shouldn't but he is also fiercely loyal and will protect anyone in his family and Therion has gained some of those traits hopefully not the reckless nature though well he's currently doing jobs for a questionable leader in Taldore so I think we're giving the Margrave too much credit. I just think he's a hopeless man who can be easily weaponized. And yeah. I'd like to think I can trust you. I've can given I you trust no him? reason to not. We could give them a good spanking. What he said. <laughs> hmm. Do you think she's... I can trust him? Okay, I wasn't sure if you heard me or not. Yeah, you see she's lost in thought for a second. Um, and you see her face drops. <sighs> I hope you can trust him. For what I have discovered through your samples are quite troubling. 
You've already but discovered stuff through the samples? I will have to discuss this with a fellow colleague of mine. Who's the colleague? Uh, I'm afraid you don't know him. To be fair, I barely know him. He's a little eclectic. Fair enough. Well, any information you have, if you could return to us with an update soon. I will. I would appreciate it. And then, I, uh, I have two questions before you go. Of course. Who's Kytheus? You know, old man, cut top to bottom. Kytheus was the head of my church in Belmere. Uh, Marcaeus uh, killed him in search of the Black Spore. And but who... once again, that was many years ago. And who, Angel, Black Wings, sound familiar? Uh, yes. Her name was Celine. Dion? She was, um, she was a creation of mine who was tasked with protecting the city of Belomir. Uh, each of the major cities in my world, um, have guardians created by some of the chief gods. They are meant to watch over the city while we are gone on other business. Unfortunately... Well, Celine didn't do a very good job. Oh, did. well... Mm, that's a... Woo. She was also slain by Marques. Ah, well, that's the power of betrayer gods. Just throwing people magical items to create destruction. Always fun. See, once again, she drifts off into thought. Anzu, I need you to make a perception check. Boy. Also Zygon. And Animus, actually, yeah. <laughs> perception? Yep. 23. Okay. Oh, it's a 10. Not very good. So, I'm not rolling well. Zygon and Anzu, you guys feel the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Almost as if there's a static charge in the air. And you all kind of feel this. Um, Animus, you see um, off in the distance this outline of a person. Like a figure. Is this the one I that... saw before? Is this the same person I saw before no. in the village? Okay. No. So, you see um, this figure as they're moving. You see multiple versions of the figure moving in front and behind each other all at once. And it's kind of like accordioning, accordioning back and forth together. Um, you guys feel the charge of arcane magic in the air. All of you that have expended spell slots regain all expended spell slots. Ah. Uh. Nice. Jesus Christ. Good hey, stuff. I didn't use any, but that sounds cool. <laughs> I'll, again. I'll take it. Those are some really hot. I wonder where this is going. So... I'm going to, like, draw my dagger just in case. Because I feel something weird. Do I get, yeah. do I get my, uh, I don't my, know my animal shapes back? No. Damn it. I tried. So you then... Uh, you guys then all see this figure... And as it's getting closer, you see, like, bits of arcane energy just sticking onto the frame of this shadowy cloaked figure. Just, I believe my colleague is here. And then appearing next to Winogir is a being of pure arcane energy, a featureless... Uh, creature of some sort around the size of a human but you see it is literal arcane energy as a in a shape of of a person uh no eyes no mouth nothing just the shape of a humanoid figure Jeez. and uh you hear 
nothing as he stands next to Winnow Gear. He doesn't talk or they. It's actually much more accurate to say this person or being is a they than it is anything else. Non binary. I'm going to take a couple steps back. Can I touch you? The figure turns what you assume is its head towards you and uh, doesn't say a word. And you touch way too many things, and I feel like asking to touch a being with this much power just may go too far. I touch him. Uh, Anzer, I need you to make a oh, uh, constitution oh, saving oh, throw. You grow, a, you grow your finger back. Oh, ah, natural 20. Fuck. Okay. Thank God I just got all my spell slots back, buddy. So, uh, Anzu, you reach out to touch this figure, and uh, your, your hand touches the arcane energy. This is the purest form of magic that you have ever felt in your entire life. This is, it's theorized that this could exist. Um, and you feel it flowing through your body. <gasps> and uh, because, because you rolled a natural 20, you don't take damage. Uh -huh. um, if you rolled anything else, you would have taken like almost 200 damage. <laughs> It would have insta died. It would have, it, have, it would have vaporized it. him. It would have vaporized I him. Feel it in me. Uh, You're lucky, son of a bitch. This, oh, this fucking idiot. <laughs> Just this, this magical see, gnome you having see, an orgasm. It's... You see the figure <laughs> gazes down at you, and you hear a voice inside your mind. <laughs> it appears that Welcome you the club. are inquisitive. And it echoes in your brain. And you are pure. <laughs> Arcana has no purity. It only exists. Oh, and God. the last word just echoes. Exists. Teach me your ways, shiny one. <laughs> Perhaps in another life. Oh my god. Oh. And then he kills you. <laughs> I'm just gonna walk back and just shiver. Anzu, you've life. never really understood clerics when they talk about spiritual experiences, but that is probably the closest you have ever been to a spiritual experience. It's like he just saw Bill Nye. It's also yeah. probably the best <laughs> orgasm he's ever had. Really? Uh, so then you see Winnow Gear turns to all of you. <sighs> Professor Zook yet again coming up on my ledger and falling off right before I see you. Yes, I have happened. <laughs> Everyone, I would like you to meet my colleague, Xenosiris. Xenosiris. Hello. He, or they, or she or whatever Xenosiris feels like, nods slightly. Well, I guess you, you guys... You see Winnow Gear then opens her cloak, and all of the items that you gave her flows out of the cloak, like floating out, and Xenosiris absorbs them into their body. Uh... This shouldn't take too long. Xenosiris is quite the fast worker. Oh, are we figuring this out right now? Is this going to be okay. answered here and now? Mm, he's more, or they, my apologies, Xenosiris, and Xenosiris says, mm. <laughs> uh, They are only here to confirm a suspicion I have. Since it deals with mm. arcane and Xenosiris's pure arcane energy, I figured they would be the best to talk to. And what is that suspicion, might I ask? All in due time, dear. Uh, before we get that answer, um, with these samples that we've given you, uh, is that something you're able to make a cure out of? Or is that something that we are going to have to figure out? Well... Um... As I'm sure you all know, uh, 
gods of other planes aren't necessarily as welcoming to gods from others as we would like. So, uh, I have received word from your Raven Queen that I am no longer welcome here. Ah, uh, yeah. I, sorry, can I do something very quick? Yes. Xenoceris. Ah, the the oh, head shape turns towards you. Ooh. And you see, like, the the energy can kind of just flow so you see the head turn and it's like an unnatural angle where like if a normal person tried to do that their head would be like completely turned to like this like like if you like twisted their head almost completely upside down i don't like that i feel like i'm you know starstruck at the moment uh, could i have a piece of you in this bottle just a little tiny piece a little speckle, what, what? Andrew, i really feel like you're asking for too much here you're asking a being of pure arcane energy to bottle themselves. No, just a little bit of yourself, Brad. Maybe a little skin. You cell. already got I weird sexual pleasure out of him. Why are you asking for this? Uh, Xenosiris holds out <laughs> what would be their hand, and you see it just, it's like a flowing tendril of arcane energy. That's generous of them. Put the cap on it. Oh no, the, the bottle explodes instantly. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing can contain Xenosiris. Oh, <laughs> foolish. <laughs> you then see um, the bluish uh, hue of Xenosiris change into a darker, sort of almost purple black sort of color. Uh, and then Xenosiris communicates silently with Winogear. Thank you, my friend. Xenosiris links out of existence. You see, you feel the charge in the air die down, and everything kind of. The animals begin to chirp, or the bird, the night owls, who, the bugs <laughs> come back in. The toad scream. Like a brrrr. That's a toad, right? What's sure. sus what's suspicion? It sounds like all the ones beautiful. I've ever heard. What's suspicion? It appears Did they get or not get. It appears that the black spore has mutated and is now more to Marcaeus's liking than it was before. Let me guess that means it's going to affect more than just elves. It will affect anyone and everyone that practices arcane magic. Oh. Oh. Oh? I'm okay. I think... Nope. I'm a I warlock. I wouldn't be so sure. I'm a warlock. Fuck. It's a good time scary. for luck, are they? Picked up those gauntlets that use magic. Why aren't Athena and I being affected at the moment? My theory is that you were exposed to a weaker strain, one that had not developed yet, into what it is now. Like a vaccine. Is there a way we could potentially use that? Make a cure? The technology on your world is not adequate enough, but I can use the blood samples that you've given me and take them back to mine. Then you should, I mean, I think you were going to anyway, but I think you should. Uh, I have little we'll hope for what we can do here. We'll see. From what I can tell, it hasn't spread much. As long as that Spencer girl doesn't socialize too much. Oh, she socializes. Mm, perhaps she should have stopped to that. Uh, we're heading back to Amon within the week. Uh, Told you. So Put in the cage, throw away the key. We just have to head north for some stuff, and we've got a lot of other stuff to figure out. I mean, we may not even be alive long enough for the Black Spore to affect us anyway if uh, these three months don't come with some help and some preparation, so. That is quite the amusing thought. We appreciate what uh, you found out for us and for our work we have to do. 
Your appreciation will only be valid when this is over. I am the reason this is here. I do not deserve it. Well, there are plenty of people who care to find an end to this. I'm sure we will. If something can was created, it can be destroyed. I have seen many things die. But I have also seen many things live. There is not one or the other. One cannot exist without the other. You'll find a way. You'll find a way. And then you see Glacial uh, come back over. She looks to be about 25 now. Um, she bows to the group of you. She says, um, Mother, perhaps we should be leaving soon. No gear. I do believe you're right. We'll be in touch. And then you see Thanks she begins too. to the two walk off into the darkness and disappear. And that will be where we end tonight's session. Oh boy. It's a lot a lot going on. Yep. That was called Expedition Exposition Dump. Man. We got All right, we found everybody. some information. Yep. All right, everyone, I want to say thank you so much. And from everyone else, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next week. See you guys.